bring up our last presenter, uh, Thomas. Let's give him a hand. The first thing I'd like to say is to congratulate you and congratulate yourselves for coming tonight. Because this is the first step in your journey. It may not be the first step, but it's the continuous step, which everybody needs to come and be motivated at these type of seminars. Now, this is a picture of the billboard outside of my business. And I bring it tonight because it breaks the consciousness of people. What, I mean, what do I mean by that? If I ask you, what's the fifth store down on Jamaica Avenue? Now, many of you have been down Jamaica Avenue a hundred times and seen many stores. But can you name the stores on Jamaica Avenue? No, you can name one or two which you go into. Because all of us have selective perception. So when you are trying to promote your business, you have to break through people's consciousness and create relationships and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it to create that perception. Now, a good example of that would be if I came up to any one of you on the subway and said, Hi, my name is Thomas Montgomery. Can I paint your house today? You guys will look at me and be like, Paint my house? I don't even know you. However, if I had a contracting business that was down the block from you, and every day I saw you and said, good morning, Mr. Smith, how are you today? And you said, Thomas, how are you? Thank you. Now, when the time comes up that your house needs to be painted, you and I have created a relationship. And the relationship is there waiting for the time that you need that product. So that is one of the first keys to advertising is that you have to create a relationship. Imagine if somebody walked up to you on the street, you ladies are familiar with this, and said, hi, would you like to go out to dinner with me tonight? You'd be like, no, 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 please leave me alone, right? However, somebody that you know for several months, that you know is a good man, now you'd be more inclined to do that. Well, the same thing with advertising, marketing, and business, that you have to create the relationship, and you have to create the relationship in a non-threatening way. You must hold yourself out as a professional, as someone who's there to help you, and people are reciprocal. We are all reciprocal by nature. If I help you, you don't, you don't forget the fact that I helped you. You know that there's a little calculator in your head that says, hey, he's a good man, he helped me when I needed it. And you might refer business over, you might need the business yourself, but you don't forget somebody that helped you. And that's what it's all about. It's all about people and helping each other, okay? Now, this is the goal. As entrepreneurs, we get to paint the portrait of our life. We get to make our own hours. We get to follow our dream. We only have one shot in life. We're only going through this once. So I want each and every one of you to do something you love. If you're going to walk away from here tonight with one message, do something you love. I was speaking to an 85 year old man in the hospital last week. And do you think he said to me, you know, I think I should have spent more hours in the factory? <laughs> or did he say that he wished that he had worked and followed his dream to its fulfillment? So that's what I want you all to know is that following your dream and being happy is what it's about. And being an entrepreneur is the easiest way to do that. In order to do that, we must feed our brain. The average American watches 4.2 hours of television every day. You belong to the cult of the mass media. 4.2 hours of being brainwashed with mind-numbing things. Do we care what's going on with the Kim Kardashians or with basketball wives? Which side of that glass tube would you like to be on? Do you want to be in the tube, or do you want to be outside the tube? Well, if you want to be in the tube, you've got to stop watching the tube and start feeding your brain with seminars, with YouTube, with reading books about becoming an entrepreneur, because the secret is 
all in the mind. The secret is all in the mind. Success is like a safe. If you have the combination to the safe, you will be successful. The problem is, is that 99% of us don't have the combination. 1% of us have the com combination. They give it to, they give it to their children. George Bush the first. George Herbert Bush had two sons, Jeb Bush, the governor of Florida, and George W. Bush, the president of the United States. Now, what was the biggest gift that George Herbert Sr. Bush gave to his son? Was the keys to the kingdom, the combination to the safe. Andrew Cuomo, our current governor, who was his father? Mario Cuomo, the governor of New York in the 80s. The knowledge that one person gives to another and that one percent possesses and that 99% of the population don't possess is the key to being success. successful. Now I know that now. I didn't know that 15 years ago. I started my business renting a desk in a real estate office 12 years ago. Right now, I have a million dollar business. I have 14 employees. We sell insurance, we do income taxes, we do advertising, we do business consulting. If my business burned down tomorrow, I would be able to rebuild my business in one year. It took me 10 years to get to this point. I'm at the point where I have too many customers. I give my customers to my associates. But what is the key? The key is marketing and advertising. The key is the more eyeballs looking at you, the more successful you're going to be. But what does every business do? Every business does it the exact opposite. I have a client, he opens a restaurant. He spends $300,000 opening the restaurant and he has $100 of sales a day. And his rent is $10,000 a month. And I ask him, well, what are, you, what are you doing for marketing and advertising? Oh, a couple of guys are giving out some flyers. <laughs> oh my God, what are you thinking about? Let's take another example. Suppose I built a sweater factory and I spent $10 million setting up a sweater factory. And then I sat here with my friend and said, oh, uh, we got the sweater factories already. You got any customers? No customers. I thought you were going to bring customers. Now that would be ridiculous. We would have a sweater factory in a warehouse district and we would have zero customers. What would we have to do if we were prudent entrepreneurs before we spent $10 million setting up a sweater factory? we would set up the sales and the marketing and the advertising team first. So I say to all of you entrepreneurs, don't spend your money on the fixed assets first, spend your money perfecting your marketing and sales act. Before you go and spend $400,000 on a nightclub, be a nightclub promoter. It costs you nothing to be a nightclub, not nothing, but it costs you a couple thousand dollars in flyers and mailing and emailing like our, our friend was speaking about before. And perfect your act. That way you can reduce your failure rate to close to zero. When I went from my real estate, from my one desk into my current office, I already had 500 clients coming to my desk. Right? I rented a desk in somebody's office to do, real, to do income tax in a real estate office. And I over-advertised until the point where I had way too many people coming in there. And so I already had 500 clients. So for me to take the office next door was a no-brainer. Because I did the advertising and the marketing first. 
Now, each one of us could do this. As I said, the keys to the safe, the combination to the safe, any one of us could do. It's not magic. Look at Mr. Obama. Ten years ago, he was a community organizer. Now, what was his secret to success? Marketing and advertising. Brand Obama. Once the media took him under the wing and promoted him, all of a sudden he becomes the most powerful man in the world. His social media, his advertising, his marketing, his salesmanship, because yes, every time you vote for somebody, you are purchasing their product, was far superior to John McCain's. So this is the key to the kingdom. Right now, we are living through one of the most exciting times in human history. The most exciting time in human history is right now. Human history and humanity advances at an exponential rate. All of the content in the world, what I mean by content is newspaper articles, videos, magazines, that were created before 1995, all of them are created in 48 hours. Every, every two days, we create more content than all of the content made throughout the history of mankind. Think about that. Because of the internet. Think of, think of in, I think it was the 1400s, they created the printing press. So what was the content before the printing press? People scratching on cave walls, people making parchments and animal skins. So once the printing press comes, we advance, we advance, we advance. Now every one of us, they are connected. We have one mind to the four billionth power. Because any one of us can go on the internet right now and find out everything about the world. Because it's out there. So now, what's happening to major media? What's happening to the big media conglomerates? Do you realize that 90% of the media is owned by seven companies? Seven companies own 90% of the media. And do they have an agenda? Yes, they definitely have an agenda. They're controlling the minds of the population. But in the last four or five years, that model is crashing down. YouTube and the internet is destroying the big media companies. The newspapers are going out of business. The network televisions are losing ratings. People spend, women are spending their time on Facebook in the afternoon instead of watching all my children. Now, if you look at my videos, which, Al, can you, Ali, can you put on a good video, please? Fix that. Okay. Any one of us can create a channel. Every one of us can create a website. Now, on your website, do you want to have text? Just think that the average person like to read. Or do they watch television? watch television? But now every one of us can create our own television channel. Now, how do we make that profitable? We make that profitable by narrowing it down to a niche. And there are four billion people online now, so products which couldn't have been sold, which weren't cost effective to sell, can now be sold to a niche. So this is the new medium